Studying Shakespeare can be a challenge for many students, and sometimes the language of Shakespeare itself can be very inaccessible for them. Uh, that's why when I present Shakespeare to my students, I make a real effort to make it engaging and entertaining for them. Uh, one of the things that I do do is always read through every act and scene with them, word for word, line for line. Uh, at times I do invite students to read along with me or to play some characters, but most of the time I do take the role of all the characters in the scene. Uh, one of the things I like to do to keep entertaining is to adopt certain accents, British accents mostly, uh, female voices if I can, uh, to try and really animate the characters and make the characters sound real for the students. Uh, this sometimes I think really helps them be engaged and helps them follow along as we're reading through the text. And sometimes they can pick up on the emotion in my voice as I'm reading and therefore they can get a sense of the meaning of the text uh, without even sometimes understanding specifically word for word what it is that I'm reading. Uh, so what I'd just like to share with you is just a quick reading of Act 1, Scene 1 of Twelfth Night, which is the play that we've studied this year. Uh, we are at Duke Orsino's palace, and Duke Orsino and a few of his servants are talking about the importance of love. Twelfth Night, Act 1, Scene 1. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again, it had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet south that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough! No more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. O oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as a sea, not enters there, of what validity and pitch soar, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will ye go hot, my lord? What, curio? The heart. Why, so I do. The noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, Methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, And my desires like fell and cruel hounds Ere since pursue me. How now? What news from her? Uh, so please, my lord, uh, I might not be admitted, uh, but from her handmaid do return this answer. Uh, the element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view, but uh, like a cloistress she will veiled walk in water once a day her chamber round with eye-offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath a heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love but to a brother, how will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her? When liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled, her sweet perfections with one self-king. Away before me, to sweet beds of flowers, love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. And so ends the first scene of Twelfth Night. Uh, at times, my accents do fluctuate. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm a trained actor by any means, but I have found that by simply encouraging the students to uh, engage with the text in this way, to kind of uh, stretch a little bit and enjoy the, the sound of Shakespeare, which I think is quite important because, of course, it was originally meant to be performed and not simply read. Uh, it, it helps the students uh, become engaged with the text, which then helps them understand it, and, of course, in that way, become better students uh, of English literature.